So that's cool. That tracks. There's this uh, poster in my uh, office building. It's called the Filthy 14. And it's just literally. Oh. Come on. You in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Hi right, everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale Podcast. Alligator snapping turtles. Alligator snapping turtles. And democracy. And democracy. <laughs> We're still on the democracy trip. <laughs> you know, we? pretty pretty soon that's gonna end. We? Yeah, we as in like as a nation, you okay. know. As a united people. Not as for a long. Democratic People's Republic of Helldivers. <laughs> Not for long. Anyways. Welcome to the show. We've got another week of uh, exciting things to talk about. Shenanigans. Hopefully. And we're going to start, as always, with our weekly highlights. Do you want to go first? Sure. Yeah. Um, so this was a, this is an interesting week for, for highlights. Didn't get a ton of, ton of stuff to the table, kind of like your, your, your week, the last one. Slow week. But where you had Kutnora, at least, to fall back on, like... I didn't really have a whole lot of solid, solid games. Like, the only game I think that I was, like, really, like, enjoyed and be like, I'm excited to play this game again was Earth. Oh. Great game. Um, but I feel like that were, it wasn't, like, a highlight. It was only a highlight because, like, it was competing against other games that just weren't great. Uh, so I'm going to do, like, an... Like it just an, happened. It's the top game of the week. Yeah. But I'm, okay. so I'm going to give an anti-highlight because it was still valuable. A like, low light. A low light. Yeah. Kind of like a... Because it was it was educational, I guess, like informative. You know, for what ga- type of games you hate? <laughs> Not necessarily hate, but I mean, it definitely confirmed a few things. But the game is Millennium Blades. Uh, we played it last night, and um, yeah, um, I kickstarted that game back in 2015 or 16 or whenever it came out. I think I played it once the entire, like in the last eight years. We played it last night. I kept it for the longest time because it was. Yeah, you know, an LCG simulator seemed like interesting concept, and I was getting ready to sell it at one point, and I was like, "Well, I'll hold on to it." But yeah, it's just I think the two biggest problems are that there is just too much information. You've got new cards coming out all the time, so like even though you're like drawing a bunch and you have to like read them and try to like synergize a deck, you know, of eight cards. Anytime somebody puts a new card into the to the aftermarket, you're like, "Oh, what's going on over there?" Oh, okay. And you have to always be aware. You to a certain extent, like there was points where you could just stop paying attention to other things, and like you got your deck to a certain point where it was okay. But it definitely feels like there's so much stuff going on, um, and that's I guess is another part of that is the setup because like you combine something close to like 500 cards into a massive deck, it's humongous. Um, but the other part of the problem is, is that the game isn't developed enough to have a detailed set of clarifications. So there were a lot of different rules where we're like, well, interpretation. Yep. And it was stuff where it's like, well, if this goes one way, like it's going to help one player a lot. And it was hard to kind of be objective, um, at a certain point, you know, cause you're like, well, you know, you're doing really good and. I think I'm going to, I could see this this way. I could see this that way, but, but because you're doing good, I'm going to go the other way and give the other player a chance. Yeah. So that's, I, yeah, that's really annoying actually. Yeah. But it, uh, immediately after <sighs> packing it up, got put on the shelf next to the rest of the games to get sold. So Ooh. yeah, that was the, that was the death knell. So millennium blades. Goodbye. Yeah. Farewell. Rotten peace. Yep. With the non-recyclables. Because I recently found out, I don't know if you guys knew, that apparently recycling is a myth. And my little bin out there that I have that has a blue top is just trash with a blue top. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. There was this article. I have to read the entire thing, you know, because I, like many people, read an article and I make my entire personality about that for a few days. <laughs> but yeah, supposedly that uh, the recycling part of Reduce, Reuse, Recycle is basically a lie and everything because it's too hard to sort out and no one wants to spend the money to actually put resources towards that. Yeah, It just gets thrown in the trash anyway. They take it to a lot where it 
it's like, oh, this is the recycling lot, which goes to the trash lot. The trash lot. So that's cool. That tracks. There's this uh, poster in my uh, office building. It's called the Filthy 14. And it's just literally. Come on. You in high school. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. You beat me. That was the best one to do. We both were both writing on you. Come on, man. (laughs) Uh, But it's literally a list of like 14 things that you're not supposed to put in the recycling bin. And it's everything. People. Like the only thing I think you're able to recycle is like plain white paper. (laughs) It's ridiculous. At any rate, yes. Did you say people? <laughs> I almost said pets. <laughs> Soylent green is people. It's Soylent, Soylent people. green. Soylent. Jinx. Soylent. Soylent. Not silent. I said Soylent. Oh. What's Soylent, though? Soylent green? Um, it's a movie. What's the, it's the, what's the movie called? Isn't it, just, isn't it called isn't it Soylent, called Soylent green? green? Ah, I so. dude, I should know. I've seen it. He was like 38 when it came out. Oh, it's like from the 50s. (laughs) It's an older movie, but um, like the the like the big thing is is that like the stuff that they're feeding people is made of people. Oh, okay. Yeah. (laughs) It's not even 38 now. (laughs) (laughs) Uncle Grandpa over here always taking. (laughs) It's always the butt of the joke. Oh man. It's all right. Okay, well, <laughs> Soil and Green is Kevin's weekly highlight. <laughs> Have you ever had Soylent, though? Oh, that's right. It's like a product now. It's like a like a health product, right? It's like a meal supplement. Yeah, oh. which I think is hilarious because... <laughs> Life imitates art. It's it's obviously like clearly a choice was made. I mean, I don't know how new it is or how no, no. old it is. That is Soylent, like the supplement, is way after... Soylent Green, the t- movie reference, way after. So somebody clearly made a choice. They're like, <laughs> "This would be funny." But yeah, uh, have you ever? I mean, it's not terrible. No, don't look this up. I'm a I'm a red meat eating. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I don't care. It, I mean, it's like one of the. It's like one of those fucking things where it's like, you don't have time for breakfast in the morning. Got to go to work. Pop one of these. Oh, yeah. okay. You're correct. It was just called Soylent Green. Like a space meal? Yeah. You just put it in and expand inside <laughs> of you. <laughs> just unproved bread or unproved <laughs> dough, basically. Okay, well, my highlight, I'm actually going to start with a little baby honorable highlight, and it's mine. Because mm. I did speak about it a little bit on the other podcast, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. But I did get to play it, and it was as fun as I thought it was. Without any of the add-ons, so I'm excited to play with those. And I'll leave that there. Wait, play there the game. are add-ons? Yeah. What there's, have we not been playing with? It's like two or three in there. There's at least one that he explained where there's an alien, and there's tiles that on each person's turn, you flip the new tile. It tell, it gives you a number of dice that you can you start with, and it has like an ability or something mm-hmm. on it. And then it tells you where to put the little alien tile. And then if you reach the alien tile, you get points. Changes the game. More variability for thirty. I know. For $30. Again, for thirty dollars, there's just more. Like, there's more. Yeah. But there's wait. that. There's one. There's like exploration tiles. There's exploration. And there's one more, but I can't. Dude, Rebel remember. really outdid themselves. Dude, that's nuts. Yeah. So that's my little baby honorable mention highlight. Um, the big one is going to be uh, Last Light, and if you have not seen or heard about that game, it is too late for you to acquire it because I'm pretty sure the Game Found campaign ended. I Today. almost positive they'll have late pledges open now. You think so? I bet. Well, the campaign, I think the the whatever the the normal campaign ends to today, unfortunately. So you won't see this by the time uh, that happens. But I got to play the game. It is advertised as a four X that can be played in an hour. And let me tell you guys, we played with five players. Four of us knew, and it took us an hour and 14 minutes, start to finish. Yep. Four of us knew. Mm -hmm. Not an hour, fine, but for it to be almost an hour with almost all players being new, I think is actually like 
so cool, first of all. Second, it very much did give me the, the feeling of I have a little little civilization. I'm exploring a little bit, taking control of planets, doing a little bit of combat, doing a little bit of um, technology, researching, stuff like that, advancing my civilization. And it did not... There were some parts where I felt hamstring with the action mechanism because you have to pick an action card out of a few. You play that, you don't have it in your hand to play anymore. Mm -hmm. You have a refresh card that'll let you take your played cards back. But once everyone... You leave the refresh out there? Once everyone has played the refresh, then you get your refresh back. But otherwise, you only have each action card... A few times. Twice. Yeah. And for and before resets, right? And for a game that is supposed to be a 4X, it felt a little bit like my civilization specifically was limited just by the that mechanism of the game. And I could probably have found there was some text that allow you to like, you know, exhaust it to just take a card back immediately. So I just probably didn't get lucky with those texts. But Otherwise, I thought it was really fun. I like the way that uh, there's three types of ships. Um, you have mods that you can add to the ships. They have abilities you can add to them. You have civilization abilities like I was talking about. The exploring part, which I really spent a lot of resources on, was fun. And maybe not the most rewarding because I don't think I got really lucky. But still fun. I love flipping over tiles and finding out what you know, random loot. Yeah. And, oh, also, the the copy I played was the like all in crazy version. Yeah. <clears throat> all the nice little planets, the acrylic mm-hmm. planets, very cool on the table. Yeah. I will say, I am probably not going to get it just because I would probably only get it with that all in crazy planets and stuff, and it's very expensive. Um. So there's there's two different versions of the type of planets. So there's like the base set of planets that are still really good, which is what I have. And then there's like the even nicer planets. Yeah. And I I mean, I don't know. I'm guessing you, so you, you know, you played with like the was, add-on ones. Yeah. Cause he said he paid like 350 for when he got it. It was like one of 25 copies they had a couple or a year ago or something like that at Gen Con or something, <clears throat> some show. Yeah. I'd have to go back and look at the differences. I just remember they kept adding stuff on like the center planet. They had like one that had like a, a light inside of it. And That's I'm like, he has. I don't need, well, that was like an individual add on. Was it really? Yeah. Like you literally could choose that with or without like the other planetary upgrades. There was a bunch of different choices and it just became, it was one of those things where you're like, man, they're, they're, they're fucking marbles. <laughs> like they look cool, but like, I'm not paying another fifty dollars for no. cooler marbles. Yeah. Well, that's my thing. Is like, I, I, I think I only want to play the game with the cool ones, but Check it's also not copy. gonna be worth me spending that money. I'll play your copy. I'll well, play his copy. Say, like, also just look at my copy and see what the difference yeah. is. I'll play. I'll play every, anyone else's copy any day. Yeah. Just personally, I won't, I probably won't be buying it. But that was my that's highlight. Fair. The game was fun. I agree. Time. Yeah. We said we played it. We played it together, mm-hmm. and then you played it once before that, <coughs> and you played it. At we played it at eight. Eight. Yeah. Talk about that. Um. <laughs> um. Honestly, great. Wow. I, Wonderful well, opinion. No, 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 no. I don't think I liked it. I thought it was cool. Um. I don't think we played it with the right group, and I also don't think it was the right time to play it because we were already two, three games in to that game night. And then somebody had came and asked us if we wanted to play. And in the back of my mind, I was like, probably, probably we probably no. shouldn't play this because it was already like nine. Oh, and we no. were like, we probably shouldn't play this. And n- none of us have played it, but we ended up playing it anyway. And a couple of the players weren't very invested. And just mentally. Yeah, Damn. mentally, and it's like just having to learn all of it at once. It just it just wasn't the right time, and it wasn't the right people. Simultaneous think. play is hard. When yeah, you have players who aren't as interested or still like learning. 
or like especially more complex games because like like I'm trying to do my thing and focus on my stuff, but now like somebody might be asking questions or I might be become like kind of concerned. I'm like, hey, are you playing right? Like, because you see them do something and you're like, whoa, how did you how did you do that? And then you're like, oh, okay, maybe I need to watch this player and make sure they're playing right, not because they're doing it maliciously, but like maybe they just don't understand, you know. And also throw in seven other people, right? Yeah. It's a lot. See, I actually to just, thought, it's a lot to uh, keep track of. I actually thought that um, the way that it was managed for the for specifically the game I played, although I do think it was four players, right? Five. You have five. And I do think that we were all pretty advanced gamers as well. Yeah. And it was the first thing we played. Yeah. So fresh brains. Yeah. You know, everyone kind of they already have a knack for you know learning advanced games, so. Learning, and I wouldn't call that an advanced game. Just being able to learn a medium-ish yeah. game is easier, you know. I I found it interesting. I liked it overall. I liked it, like. But my my two critiques. One is a uh, they're both like have almost nothing to do with the game itself. One is that the rule book doesn't really provide a lot of depth because it is a simple game and and whatnot. But like, and I don't know. Like, I still just felt like I'm like, give me a little bit more, right? Like, and even playthrough videos. Like, when I was first starting to like figure out like how to teach the game, I was looking for playthrough videos and not playthrough videos, but um, like how to play videos. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find how to play videos because everything was the the craze was, can this be played in under an hour? So everyone was doing that. They're just yeah, like playing in under an hour, playing in an hour. So you just kind of had to watch a little bit of a playthrough in order to get an idea. And it was okay, but it was just kind of like, somebody, please, for the love of God, just do a playthrough video. Um, or maybe not how to play, excuse me. The other thing is is that, so, eight, cool, right? But, so, you you did, you did probably saw, in order to play five, they had to have both boxes. Yeah. So, yeah, one box is four players, the other box is an additional four players. Honestly... Seven and eight players is probably starting to get to that point where it's too much. Like, if you've got seven to eight people trying to play a game, just break up your group. Play werewolf. Or whoa, <laughs> whoa! Whoa! Freudian slip. Well, he's going to go throw himself down the stairs. Dwayne's going to go commit seppuku because he just committed his the ultimate betrayal against, he's literally, against he's himself. Gone. He's literally gone. He's, he's gone forever. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> Dwayne has this really huge infatuation with Blood on the Clock Tower, and it has replaced and beat down the werewolf in his life. But something in his brain thought it was an appropriate time to sneak in a, let's play werewolf. Hey, but honestly, though, honestly, hey, Dwayne. I feel disgusted. But let's, hey, let's give yourself a little grace here. Why? Because I said seven to eight players. If you have seven players, you're not playing Blood on the Clock Tower. It's because one of you is going to have to be the storyteller. That leaves six players left. Mm -hmm. Are you going to play that? Are you going to play a six-player Clock Tower? I never no, count the storyteller as a player. Well, that's what I'm saying. So of the seven people that are playing a game with okay, you, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. one of them has got to go be the storyteller, right? Mm -hmm. Seven, I think you said multiple times, is like your bare minimum. Players, six, players. Six, if like if, pe if, if people, people want to play Clock Tower, I'll play it at six. I will never play with five. Yeah. And then seven is where the game starts. Yep. I would love to be the storyteller one day. Do it. He'll teach you. I just feel like I, I will have to learn so much. Yeah. It's but not I want I want to take um, like a speaker and play like soundtracks and stuff in between. Yeah. Sound effects. <laughs> but uh, as I was saying, to close out my comment about Last Light, honestly, to me, it's six it's a six player game it should just at be max. capped at six players and if you know make the box big grr, right but if you could just put the components into the all box. into one just a six player thing be done with it and not you know not having to heck carry around two boxes that would have been my preference but i also get that there's they're they, they've got a niche now they've got a game a stop 4x game that can play eight players in under an hour i think I that the eight player push is just so that there is a possibility for board symmetry. Because otherwise, you have two 
sorry, you have two players, two, the two extra players would be on each end. When we played with five, there was a player in the middle over here of two of us. And it technically, we were all the same amount of spaces away from like the planets, right? Yeah. But it still felt like that person is forced <laughs> to interact with us. They have they have board add-ons. Yeah. Board modifiers to change. Yeah, there's the, like little meteors to like change distances and stuff. Not only that, but I think we... Because we played at six, right? Five. Mm, five. Was it five? Because... Mm -hmm. It put... You, it, you it mean... Just... No, no. It was six. Because Allie was there, right? Pretty sure she was. And Madison was there. So I think that was six. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so point being is that there was like a whole big chunk you added to the board, like added onto it at a certain player count. So like they do have, they've already taken that into consideration for like how to modify the board for additional or less players. I'll have to show you. Cause I think we're talking about the same thing. It's like a whole thing that you added. You like not, yeah. not meteors. No, it's like a it's piece like, of cardboard that you add on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I just don't think that's enough. Okay. I think it kind of jams that, that, the, that player in totally fair. If you're at eight, it's equal. Sure. But five but or six. What about seven? You're not equal. Yeah. You know? So they, well, they put it to eight so that you're symmetrical so on a square board. You six know? could have been. Six, I think, could be fine. Hexagon. But then it's like <laughs> a weird shape, right? I just don't think you play with that many. I'm with you. I'm with you. Like, think, you can. Yeah. I think, should you? I think four is good. Four is enough. Yeah. If you want to play six. a big giant 4X game and you have it, just. Just play a big giant forex game. Just play Twilight. Yeah, right. there it is. Just, just commit. I'm proud of us for just not, commit for not comparing it to Ti for that whole time. Dude, it's not that. I'm not trying to compare. It. I'm just saying if you want to play an eight player game, that's a big giant forex game. Time time commitment thing, fine, fine, right? Like that's the only thing I'll give it to you for. Otherwise, just play Twilight. Just yeah. learn it. I mean, there are other forex style games that and do that play too. less time than than last light. I heard somebody compared it. They said it's not a 4X. They're like, it's a Euro game. Because you're trying to optimize your engine, utilize resources, right? I don't know. Hand management. I To be honest with you, I don't even know the real definitions <laughs> of anything. Yeah, that's fair. To me, I thought Ameritrash games were just games with minis. I um, mean, for a long time, they were. And I thought Euro games were just things that didn't have minis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's also true. So, is there of, is there a Euro game, a classically like a clearly definable Euro game that like heavy focus on mechanisms that has miniatures? Do I would not know. I barely understand the categorization of it at this. It's point. fair. I think the answer is probably no. I would I would be. I mean, if if it is any, it's slim. There's no minis in there. Nope. <laughs> nope. I mean, Castles of Burgundy I there might be now with the special edition. Yeah, but you can't count that because you could. <laughs> I guess original, you could replace yeah. everything with cardboard. Well, that's true for everything, though. Yeah, right. You like you could do like with Barcelona cardboard. with like terracotta, different things, house minis. You know, you could do Maracaibo. Those are not with ships. The minis, minis function in a different way. So what do you mean then? That's my problem. Is I don't know. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> I don't know how to differentiate it. You yeah. Know? At any rate. That was my highlight last night. <laughs> What's your highlight? My highlight was uh, In the Footsteps of Darwin. It's a simple little tile placement game about Charles Darwin. Do you remember when I won that the first time we played it? We played it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh. the one where you like sail around. That was like the our thing, right? that was like our second time probably playing a game together. Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah. I I've was played there. it a couple times. I was there when it was written. I think you were there. I think Cindy was there. I don't remember that. Yeah. But yeah, you were about to say I just played it for the first time. Was that the same time we played Encyclopedia? I think it was because it's like, oh my god, all of these like the, no, the candy. Oh, it was because Cindy got there late. Yeah, and then we were like, oh yeah, well we'll just finish. No, that this was and then the play that was else. the brass day. 
No, no, it wasn't. No, Brass Day was. Different. I mean, that was also probably the Brass Day that Cindy showed up late, uh, but we were in the middle of a game because that happened. To, well, that happens a lot. Cindy, Not like her. See, fault, I don't remember Cindy being bum, at bum, that bum. day. No, she did. I'm pretty sure because we were playing with He Who Shall Not Be Named, Encyclopedia. It was, and then I'm she showed up, and I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was just us four. I think so, but I think it was the same day because I was like, God damn. Like two games that like very similar, like theme, theme. Mm-hmm. like color palettes, very similar, like a lot of the same stuff going on. Animal science. I could have, I could have swore it was the same day. I think so too, honestly. Yeah, I'd give you the vote. <laughs> You're off the but, island. <laughs> but yeah, simple, simple tile placement game. You're moving the, uh, what's it called? Boat. <laughs> what's the boat called? Ship. Oh, oh, the beagle. The yeah, beagle. The HMS yeah. beagle. The beagle. The you're hams you're beagle. sailing it around the board, and wherever it stops, you got to pick uh, from a three by three grid. You got to pick in that row that the that the beagle is yeah. in. Got to hit the gritty. You take it. You take <laughs> the tile and you put it in your journal, depending on the species and where it's from. And you honestly, you're just scoring points from objectives that you're gaining. Um, it could be like. Animals from this continent, this species of animals, animals in this quadrant of the board, this category this, of animals, yeah, like reptiles, yeah. Like that. So like it's type of animal. <laughs> oh, he said species. I took that as nope, like multiple. Hey, you know what? I can see the point. You are absolutely correct. <laughs> Let's go. But yeah, that's the last time you're gonna win tonight. <gasps> um, we're playing Dude Imperium after this, by the way, and I, I am gonna <laughs> win. I played it twice. Good. I played it probably like four time. or five times. I think at this point, really like it. Oh, nice. But yeah, there's not a, there's not a lot to talk about on uh, Darwin. It's really simple. It's pretty short. Game ends after twelve not tiles a are lot taken. To talk about on Darwin. Only one of the most prestigious Shut up. explorers <laughs> of the modern era of all six thousand years that the Earth. You has can't existed. fuck people though hard because you take a tile, then move the boat. You don't move, then take, mm. which is kind of wild. Because you take it, and then you'd be like, what do you need? <laughs> Fucking pass that shit up. Yeah, but you can move it, though. You can go backwards yeah. if you use the... If you got guides for it. Yeah. That's why you move it far. <laughs> yeah. What's that mechanic called? What? To move the... If you have guides from the native island. It's called abuse the natives or something. <laughs> <laughs> And then somebody plays Exploit. the John Coe's the Hawaiian card, and they just murder the entire crew. Oh, we're getting into history. All of a sudden, it's a war game. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> now we've entered stage two. You pull out this box of minis. <laughs> Everyone's got guns and swords. You play Star- Darwin, and then you play Spirit Island. Oh, there you go. There. Ooh, but cross- that's where I leave. Crossover. <laughs> yeah, because it's the most shit co-op game ever invented. <laughs> Hey, so I got to tell this story. So this was going to be one of my other like honorable mention games. So we played Day, uh, Daybreak um, okay. on Sunday. And uh, co-op game, um, eco game, right? You're trying to save the world from natural disaster or from like heating up, right? And, Good um, luck. <clears throat> it's hard. It's, I think it's generally just meant to be a difficult game. Um, I'll give it credit, though, because like so a lot of games where like the ecological thing like overcomes the quality of the game of the game um, oh the gameplay like the theme is is driven too hard what was that one we played one earth one earth where like it basically any one player could Name like cringe sabotage the game if they just weren't interested in cooperating it, like it really forced you to if you guys wanted to, to win but because individual players had that kind of agency and like if they just didn't feel like things were going their way they could just sabotage it which again is like I get it. It's there's a validity to it, right? In like the, the global political like way of things, but Daybreak doesn't quite go that bad. Um, but it was difficult. Uh, but I got to see firsthand what it's like to play a co-op game with Dwayne. Mm-hmm. It's, he just plays it by himself. <laughs> Dang, dude! He's played it by himself, and uh, this him the whole time. Is it my turn yet? Well, this is even better. It's simultaneous play. So all the players are playing together, and in the only like thing that's forcing... There's nothing forcing you to interact with each other. 
Like you can just choose not to be like, hey, what do you got going on? Oh, hey, I see you got some you got some dirty energy. Like, all right, hey, I, I've got a card. I can do this to help you. Oh, you get your you got communities in crisis. I can help you remove some of those tiles or whatever. Uh, hey, I'm struggling over here. Can somebody help me with this? Like, you have to do that on your own. The game will not force you to do it. Does, so, Dwayne, does Dwayne play in the game? <laughs> I mean, I don't even. Did that game get a did, uh, pick time from you? <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At least it got that. Yeah. It, uh, it was illuminating. It was interesting to see it. Like I know we played we we played co op games before, but like I don't know if it was just the vibe or what it was. But like because you you're more proactive in Atlantis Rising when when we played that a couple weeks ago. He kind of gets a little bit stinky sometimes. Yeah, that's all right. They're like <laughs> hey, look, I I'm I'm guilty of it too. You remember that play at Clank? <laughs> I had such a bad time on that game. <laughs> oh man, catacombs at that. Oh dude, that's the good one. That's the best one. I just got really unlucky. It just didn't work out for me. Tough. Yeah. Tough. I'm 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 known to be a stinker sometimes. See what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I mean, we're all subject to our moods. That's good though, because we've been knowing each other long enough to know, like, hey, this is not characteristic of this person and how they are. So it's like I'm not gonna hold it against them. Fuck you. Fuck I'm you. never playing. I'm never, never playing play with you. Dwayne again. Never playing with you again. Walk into like Black Potion, right? Go to meet up Dwayne. Are they playing a co-op? It's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it does make me sad though because I'm like, man, I gotta find other friends to play co ops. Do you play co ops that much? I don't not 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 that much, but I have enough of them. Oh, just that you that own. like I'm I'm just like, well, when am I gonna get to play this now? You know what? Those are that's great opportunities to meet new people. Exactly. <laughs> not these people. <laughs> yeah. Go hang out with Enrique. He likes co ops. Yeah. Enrique will he let he, play he tried to get me to play the crew true. again yesterday. <laughs> for I was like I don't want no tried don't what game. give me play the crew because oh it was like we had like an hour left before close uh, and he's like oh, we're just like oh something quick and I was like you, whatever whatever you want to play that you know that you can either teach or whatever and he's like oh we can play the crew and I was like accept that one. <laughs> <laughs> you are you might be the only person who is more curmudgeonly. When it comes to like games, they don't want to play. That's a new word right there. Curmudgeon? I just do it. I give. I play like three games a week. You know, like I want to. No, I get it. I get it. But like, I, 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 I'm more aligned with you than I am with like Enrique. Because like Enrique is like, I'll play anything with anyone, anywhere, at any time, under any yeah. circumstances. Oh, he has so much time. And that's I, and a, yeah, he's he's probably playing multiple games a day because of the store and his and all that stuff. Like I, I get it. It's, it it makes sense. It's rational, right? But even Dwayne, right? He plays a lot more games than I think either of us do. So, again, there's certain, like, some of that's also true. But, like, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with it. He but also like, is not a curmudgeon. <laughs> he's not a curmudgeon. No. <laughs> no, he's not. Spell curmudgeon. <clears throat> C-U-R mudgeon. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably mudgeon, right? I have it no idea, dude. C-U-R mudgeon. <clears throat> it has to be. Uh, spell democracy. H E L D I V E R S. Goddamn right, brother. <laughs> Hoorah. Wow. <laughs> Did you just spell Bell Delphine? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think Kevin knows who that is. Uh, I have no idea what you just I'm so just glad that he doesn't guys. know who that is. It'd be so inappropriate. <laughs> who that is. is she a. Uh... We're going <laughs> to. Worse. <laughs> oh, what's worse? There's nothing that's against actually, the sex industry. Well, that's I'm my, that's very the thing, pro, right? As I pro think, sex worker. I think that there's nothing wrong with that, right. with what they do. Okay. All what right. she does is worse. Is bad. All right. I'm opening up a uh, a incognito. Oh boy. What was the name? Bell. B e l l e. You're lucky she's of age. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> What's the last name? D E L. I. It's really bad because I feel P-H-I-N-E. like she tried her very hardest to present as not of age. She's a little e girl. Yeah, oh, you know, South cat- African British media personality. You no know, cat ears. She's twenty four years old. Thigh sure. highs. That whole adult. Thing. Cr- no, two days ago, New York Post. So mm-hmm. I take this with a bucket of salt. Adult creator shunned by father after selling. 
<laughs> yep, there you go. There it is. There it is. Yes. Yes. For selling used bath water online. Uh, Fuckers eat that shit up too. Uh, you know what? This is this is holy shit. Her OnlyFans costs thirty five dollars a month. Yeah, no, because she makes bank. She made like she made like fourteen million dollars in like a month or something like that. It's wild. And then she was just like, "Sick, I'm taking two years off." <laughs> and then she just went away for like two years. You know, I hey, I hate that you're enjoying this right now. I. I I'm not. This is just. This is just fucking wild. That's man. weird. He just bookmarked it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Be saving that one for later. Yeah. Um, and you know just, what? Honestly, whatever. More power to her. Honestly, but. it's one of those things. Like, like if you if people are willing to pay for something, and like you're not like it's a choice, right? She's not being exploited. She's exploiting the shit out of everyone who's willing to pay thirty five dollars a month for what they can get for free elsewhere. Oh. She's also not the only and one that uses. Water. She's not the only one that uses like, like um, I forgot what the what the term is, but like immature type presentation. Oh sure, you know, which that's the creepy part of it. But yeah, that's not really her fault, right? Like she just happened to be the popular one. Yeah, you know, I yeah, I, I can't blame the individual, right? It's <clears throat> it's the people on the other end who are. So right. that's, well, so that's Dwayne's trivia. highlight. <laughs> Belle Delphine is Dwayne's highlight. <laughs> <laughs> Bell, if you're watching this, she's not. Like and subscribe. Go ahead and send him some bath water. We'll do an ad for you in the show. You know, pro bono. As much as I look like that person, pro. Not me. That's yet to be decided. <laughs> All right. All right. And now, Let's that do some now that we've trivia. talked for 30, 45 minutes about the three games that we played. <laughs> Let's move on to bah, 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 the trivia section for this week. And this week, our question master is none other than Belle Delphine's top subscriber. <laughs> Fuck me. Mr. <laughs> How does he know? <laughs> master. Mr. Dwayneel. Master. Where's the markers? What a goober. Oh, Thanks. What a guy. What a douche. All right, boys. He's doing 10 this time, by the way. Listen up and listen well. Are we ready? Yeah. Yep. Question number one. Democracy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How many Who <laughs> provides it? <laughs> Question number one. I, I Honestly, I think I'll give this to the person who gets the most correct. What are the four most common player colors in games? And if you think you know, comment down below. Four, right? Four. Four. Okay. All right. Let me see them answers. Green, blue, Ooh, yellow, red. We have one difference. Ooh. All what right. Is it? So, the four most common colors in board games are red, blue, yellow, and green. Oh, four for four, baby. I changed my... <laughs> I want it to be different. White. I want it to be different. How'd you know you were different? Were you cheating? I want it to be different. <laughs> were you looking no, at but my shit? I feel like red, yellow, blue, green is the obvious... Like, it's the obvious choice, right? Yeah. And I feel like white is present enough, and it's different enough. I mean, dude, this was this was question number one. Why would you risk it? Just go with the sure answer. I've it's got, when you're tied that you got to break it. Yeah. <laughs> too comfortable. <laughs> yeah, because you're at the top of the uh, trivia charts. Yeah. Are we going to get our fucking My first underdog L. story today? No, I'm going to fuck these next two up. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will tell you right now, Kevin, that uh, question number two... <laughs> Probably more in Sebastian's favor than it is yours. All right, let's hear it. How many species are there in Encyclopedia? What are both of your children's birthdays? <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Which of these animals is not in Ark Nova? A, the New Zealand fur seal. That's tough. B, the greater flamingo. C, mountain tapir. Or D, the Japanese macaque. <laughs> Do you know? I thought I did. <laughs> A, the New Zealand fur seal. Mm -hmm. B, the something. Greater flamingo. The greater flamingo. C, the mountain to pier. Mm -hmm. D, Japanese macaque. The Japanese macaque. This feels like a trick question, if I'm honest with you. Because there's no such thing as a greater flamingo. I can, I just almost feel like I've seen every one of these cards. <laughs> you play too many. You play too many games with, with animals. animals. You're like shit. It's probably the fucking I think I lost. greater goddamn flamingo, but I, it's not what I picked. What'd you pick? First seal. Macaque. The animal that is not in Ark Nova is the greater flamingo. flamingo. It is the greater flamingo. I was fucking right <laughs> about being wrong. <laughs> I, I remember right. I remember seeing flamingo. It was a bit of a trick question though because the lesser flamingo oh. is in Ark Nova. I remember seeing it's the flamingo. I've seen I literally just played the macaque when I played the game the other day. Oh. Uh, see, I figured I was like, well, like the other ones are all like super specific and the greater flamingo is the one that's not. And that's what I was thinking when I was writing the question. Yeah. And I was like I was like, well, it's funny because like when you do test like multiple choice like test type mm -hmm. stuff, like you usually if there's a question or an answer that's like clearly different than the rest, that's not the answer usually. So that's why I made red, that's why I made herring. greater flamingo yeah. one because I know lesser flamingo is one of them. Lesser herring, more like. All right. Lesser All right. python. Let's go. Let's see what happens on this last. That one. was my one get back. So, GG Kev. This is a we'll free. See. This is a free response question. What? You have. 30 minutes to write one page essay. <laughs> Double spaced. Question number three. I'll give a point oh to whoever can name the heavier game on BGG. Oh, complexity? Mm hmm. Physically? Oh, okay. So, complexity. Yeah. Complexity. Mm -hmm. No campaign for North Africa because that's bullshit. <laughs> Are you giving us a list? No. Oh, we just have to list the heaviest game? Yeah. Oh. I try to be very... Uh, yeah, no, that's fair. So we'll have to look them up after different. this, right? Yeah, I like it. I like it. It's a good question. Because now it's just pitting, like, what do you think is the heaviest one that you know? And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ready? I've got Board You're Game seen, Geek loaded up right now. You ever right seen that now? video of the dog? Yeah. 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 Ready? Yeah. Did you I'm pick gonna, the same one? I'm going to tell you I didn't because I know that rating. And I don't know this rating, but I'm hoping that it is slightly above it. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Oh, oh so shit. We'll, See, look, up, we'll look up Tricarion first. 4.25. It's a 4.25? We'll, we'll, we'll make sure just in case. It's actually a 5. Tricarion is a 4.25. Oh, man. Wait. Don't, Kev, let him do it. <laughs> no. So here's the problem. That's the, the collector's base one. edition. The collector's edition is a 4.54. Because there's more stuff in it. It's got the I assume you were going for the one that the we one played. We played? Which, okay. the collector's which was edition. the base edition. Okay. No, because it's got... No, your shit is the collector's edition. No, the Yes, but the base edition has but, what we played with. We did not play with the actual extra stuff. Well, that's what that's I was basing Dog Arts on. That's Dog Arts Academy... That's the dueling duel of the fates, whatever the fuck it's called. Well, I, that's still what I was referencing. The one version of the game I what played. A fucking cheater! <laughs> you played the base game. It's just in the collector's box. Uh, not my fault. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, uh, I lost. Yes. Either on way, ruined it. On way, Mars is a four point six seven. Let's freaking Damn, go, dude. dude. All right, so we're tied. A tie? You didn't come up with a tiebreaker? No, I was hoping that was going to be the tiebreaker. <laughs> a bride taker? Well, yeah, because I mean... That's you, crazy that it 
You would have had to do something like pick a game and then five. like have us like pick the rating. You want to do a keep? You want to keep going? You want to do another like round? I'm, like another one? I'm okay. Same with it question. Being a tie, and I just don't take the L. No, it's not. I th- I'm gonna come up with a tiebreaker question. No, just keep doing that one, but see if you can get like pick another game. Oh, he pick a round. Okay, how about no, this? Pick how about another, this? Like, how about you gotta this? pick another game. How about this? How about this? Oh, oh, one of how us, about this? this uh, I'll give a point to whoever can name the lightest, the lighter game. That's so you're just gonna say like Uno. Go for it. That's, That's your game. No, mine's tic tac toe. <laughs> Okay. You picked Uno. Okay. I picked Tic Tac Toe. Okay. No, 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 no. No, just do, do the same do question. The heavier one. Heavier one. Heavier, pick heavier, another heavier game. game. Yeah. yeah. Don't be looking back here. <laughs> <laughs> Your games are way harder than my games. You got some. We got some fucking next level shit. Um. Crazy. You're googling it right now. <laughs> um. Fuck. I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah. I'm gonna have to. Y'all boys are. Nah, y'all boys, are, y'all boys are good. Kev, I'm sorry. I'm gonna yeah, have to. I'm sure you got another one. Sorry, Kev. I'm gonna have to start uh, coming up with tiebreakers now. Yeah, I'm sure this. I think this that's is only a like good a 4. one. Four point three though. What's that? The Mr. Mr. President, President game, the GMT yeah. one. So, Which we've one got food up? chain magnate at a four point two. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck it's called, Mr. President <laughs> board game. Mr. President board game. Look at that. Is that what is that it right there? Yeah, Mr. The President. American presidency? Yeah. It is oh. You went to a damn game nerds. Four point two seven. Wait, what was this one? Four point two seven? Mm-hmm. What's food chain? Food chain is a four point two zero. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> burr, 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 burr. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, Thank I wasn't you. surprised. I mean, like, you've got so many of these games that, like... Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what was that? You know Look what? up Hegemony, because I almost picked that. I know that's kind of up there, too. Hegemony. Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Hegemony, Leisure, Leisure, Leisure Class. Cl- yeah. I want to play it. Long-ass mouthful of a name. It's also, like, that's what again, said. it's one of those games that is no... I would have beat it. Wow. It's also one of those games that is nowhere near... My, like, cup your, of tea. Your usual. But she's, I want to. I just. Type. I want to play it. She's not your type. But every time she walks by you, something about her. <sighs> Damn. About you know what's fucking stupid? What? Twilight Imperium is a four point three two. I See, didn't pick it because I was like, Nah, it can't be. It can't be. Because we figured it out now. It, like I've played it so many times. I'm like, Nah. I think Campan is not even a four. I think it's like a three point nine or something. Three point eight. Maybe it's just a money thing I'm drawn to. Oh no. That Kutna? Who knows? Money. Is is hegemony not about money? No. No. Oh. It's politics. It's about politics, basically. You have the working class, the capitalist class, the government. The and, proletariat and the bourgeoisie. And the something else. I don't know what it is, though. <laughs> if you're the rich people, then yeah, you've got money. The capitalists. Can I be them? Maybe you're just evolving as a gamer. That is also true. You could just be like uh, sentiently. <laughs> that's not the word, but you guys know what I mean. Witnessing yourself evolve. Yeah, and and I mean, prior to six months ago, give or take, when we all met, how many games, like complex games, had you played? Let alone owned. How many times had you played Twilight? Zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> that number is infinitely multiplied now, technically mathematically. But you're at yeah. three. But I mean, like two. That's a good question, actually. I could tell you, not a lot. Right. So like now you have four hundred oint games. <laughs> <laughs> so you're being exposed to more of them now, right? And you're being like, oh, okay, cool, great complexity. Themselves. There's more stuff, right? And you can get past like the dark atmosphere of a game like Brass or Kutnora, because you're like, oh, you know what? I'm really having to use my brain in a way that I hadn't been before. You know, it's it's appealing to a different type of enjoyment. Maybe you don't always want to play that, but it's triggering you in different ways. So now you're like, oh, you know, I liked Brass. I like Kutna. Like, honestly, you just, from a box perspective, Hegemony looks kind of like the same, right? It looks like yeah. that it's kind of got that veneer that, you know, like the Bland. facade of it, it looks very right like that. So something about that specifically draws me. 
I think it's the font. It looks dope. Like I don't. I can't. I, I can't tell serious. you why. It looks very serious. It does. And then but like I want to play it. And then like yeah. Kutna, it's literally just Kutna horror with the big ass coin on the front of it. Like I like I don't know what it is that drew me. I to think it. hegemony. I think when you finish playing hegemony, I think you're gonna feel smarter. <laughs> you're gonna like learn. You're gonna be like, gonna be like I like now have a master's degree in geopolitics. <laughs> yeah, and economics. <laughs> when we play, when we play Mr. President, all three of us being a schizophrenic president, <laughs> we'll learn a lot about the government. <laughs> Moon Knight as president. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Moonlight. Spotlight. The <laughs> <laughs> Copyright. Skibbity. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I'm still undefeated. Big four zero right here. That's really cool. Yeah. I suck. I don't think you've won a single one yet. Nope. <laughs> Everyone laugh doctor at him. Doctor dumbass. Everyone point and laugh at him. <laughs> this guy's a doctor. Okay. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the points for Ty's thing? Okay. So this is um, when we were playing Kutnora, and we were talking about, so like games that have tiebreakers for, usually for, like sub scoring sections of the game, right? Like, oh hey, there's like this bonus, right? Or for in Kunora, we we're talking about like um who had the second most stars in a row. Okay. Right. So when two pillars are tied for first and two pillars. Two pillars. <laughs> two pillars uh are tied for first and they they share they both get the first place. I think most of us are probably okay with that. Right. With being completely friendly. So, yeah. So, like, hey, we both get first place points. points, right? Yeah. No. I feel like it's mm -hmm. usually half. You want to, well, you want to, well, so would you add first and second and then divide it by two? I would prefer that. Yeah. Fair. Right. Cause that's, that's, that's all right. I'm okay with that. With, I'm okay with first. With my argument, we're that, not there yet. That makes sense. But yeah. Go ahead. So now we got to step it down. Right. So one player gets. First place. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, right? Period. Full stop. <laughs> <laughs> and the next two players. That's going to be a t shirt. <laughs> the next two players tie, right? It doesn't matter if there's four or 10 players in the game. It doesn't matter. Look, the next two players, second and third place, are tied. What points should they get? They're tied for second. They're tied for second. If there's third place, I think second and third points, if it's available, they divide, get half. So you like the divide, get half yeah. method. I think it makes it harsher for when you didn't win, which I think helps the people who got third feel like, oh, I gained something there mm -hmm. on the people who are in the lead on the category. Okay. You know, because you, while you are getting rewarded for, you know, you didn't get second. So yeah. you're getting a point or two more, perhaps, right? But you're also not getting full first player points. So I feel like for other players, it makes it a lot more competitive. Okay. We still got another scenario. The big the big one okay. still coming. So the I think that's the one, one you're worried about. But how, what do you think? Second and third player are tied. Uh, I think. So this 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 is my thing. I don't care. How you can tell this was a situation that <laughs> came up recently. <laughs> I don't care how they get points. Can I just go into it? All right. So <laughs> the 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 big one, the big one that triggered us, right? Or triggered Dwayneel. <laughs> so two players tie for first. There's a third player option, right? For points. Do they get second place points? Or third place points. Third. Vote for third. They get second place points. They get second place points. Well, Why? That you're not in second scenario. place. Because you're not in second place. Now that that's what I was saying. If if you get first player, if if two players get first tied for first, tied for first, and you add up first and second, divide, then. I don't think second should get second place points. Mm. But if you're tied for first and you both get full points, I still think second place should get second 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 place points. I agree with that too. I don't I think that's a shitty way to do it. Cause then it kind of makes 
even getting second at moot point if both of the players ahead of you are both getting They're the full both getting reward. The, for, the full one. They're, I mean, it's like it's just, it's it, they because were the difference it. between working at first it. and third. This I, is the way I see it. No, I no. You I, got two. You got two players on the first podium. His hand gets higher and higher. <laughs> <laughs> you got two he players. Knows he's taller than us. He's like, I can retire than these motherfuckers. <laughs> you got two players on the first place podium, yeah. and then second place is on the second place podium. But that's not so. Get rid of the take the podium out of your mind, right? You got to line <clears> people up from first to last. First, first, <laughs> second place. No, nah. then count those motherfuckers. One, two, third. One, one point five, <laughs> two. <laughs> hey, it man, just, it just <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me that second place gets shit. No, because you were the third. You see the thing. You're I'm not the third no, no. best, though. I do no. You are the. Th- you, you are, are objectively the third, the third best. best. No, because if you if if two players no, tied, they the, both did you the are first the third best. Player. and they did the first and second best. No, together. Yes. No, yes, they, they are tied <laughs> yeah. for the first place points. No, but those two players tied for the best. So you as the third player. Okay, how about honestly, this? It's, how about it's this? a competitive space. I'm gonna bring. If I'm, you I'm as about the to bring. Third player, don't get competitive now, in that hold on, space. Hold on. If I'm about to I'm about to deviate from board games for a second, and okay. I'm gonna I'm bring in a, right. what I've seen no, okay. in real life. Let me deviate. With the, really quick. With, no, I've no, seen no, this. I've finish. seen it in let the. Him, I've seen cook. this in the Olympics. Right? There were there was it was a long jump, right? Losers or a high jump? I know exactly what you're talking about. Losers, both of them. It was a high jump, and two guys tied. Yep, they tied, and the the moderator, whatever, he came out and he was saying, "You guys both tied." Blah, 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 blah. And then one of the competitors was like, can we both get first? Can we both get gold? Or like he was like, can we share gold? And he said, yes. I'm and they fucking, they celebrated. Blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't think that's fair. Did they give the other out guy a gets silver? Third. The other guy gets third. That's bullshit. Nah. No, because nah. they chose to do that. Your real life example, like if I was the, the Olympic committee, first of all, I'd be like. You Who know, do you give it to then? You can you can give the gold to both of them, and then you just don't award a silver. You don't award a That's silver. Trash, bro. You don't award. It a doesn't silver. make sense. Yes, it does. Because because the second Count place the people, the second place guy, that person did that the trying... second best. No, no because he didn't. two people just got the world record. Think about it, like he has ten million dollars. I have ten million dollars. You have one million dollars, right? Who's the third? Who's richest the third purchase? richest millionaire of us? <laughs> you, poor ass motherfucker. It's with your one million loser dollars, <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do with that? Buy a house? <laughs> it's different though. No, it's not. It it's is. Not. It's literally the yeah, exact it is same because, thing. Because no, because you like, it's 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 a thing about about working towards something. You don't always get. You did not work as hard as the other two players, meaning you worked the third hardest. You know what it is? His generation. Uh, My participation trophy. trophy. Yeah. But I work so hard for this. No. Yeah. I work it's, so hard it, for this. It's, 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 it's a, a make sense. Just, it's a make try, sense. Just because make you, it make sense. Just because you try. It doesn't make sense. Just because you try doesn't mean you earn it. Just because you try doesn't mean you earn it. It's either it's either fucking give them, give them both first place points, second place gets second, or figure out who out of those two gets, honestly, gets, gets first place and second place. Honestly, I mean, like, I do like... The idea that if you have two players tied, you add up the bonuses. Divide them. And you divide them. Now, then here's do, a problem, Then do though. that, and nope. second place doesn't get second place points. I'm fine with no, that. They get well, no, third place exactly. would be third place points because they're clearly third place. Yeah. Then that, ma- that makes here's more the sense problem, to me. Though. So those two guys no, no, get nope, gold, nope. and then the other guy gets his bronze. <laughs> but here's the problem, though. We talk about this in games <laughs> where a tie is possible, or excuse me, like you can evenly divide the stuff. So like in Kutnora, it was a matter of points. You could easily just be like, oh, it's eight points, it's or it's five points, and it's three points. Add them together, divide it by, you'll both get four. Go on your merry way. We're about to go play Dune Imperium, where in a conflict, first player, second player, and third, or first, second, and third place all get very different rewards. Like first players, first place is going to win a victory point in some cases, well, the next player is going to get some spice, right? Yeah, here's your one so water. how do you, you know, And but now that game does not allow for ties. 
Then what do you do? I don't remember. <laughs> then that's... I that, don't remember what the tiebreaker is in combat, right? But there's there's no ties. So that's that's, the other that's thing fine, like, then. You could also, like... So, like, Kutna, you could do something where you say maybe... I think it's the tiebreaker is more physical guys in the thing. Oh, on the mine? I think so. That would be a good one. No, is no, it no. written? No, not for Kutna, for Dune. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's more physical yeah. guys in the combat. In the, yeah, exactly, rather than the other ones. But, yeah, you could do the same thing for here. Like, you could say the more, like, whoever has more miners in the mine. I think that, that, that Then that if you're going to do that, you've, you've then in, you can there's give, no ties. Then you can give. Some, no, then there's no ties. You make it so there are no ties possible. Yeah, you, put, yeah, you do write that, three rather, breakers in there. I would rather do that than first Well, yeah, that's just more equitable. That's better because there are no real ties. Yeah. yeah. But in a case where so there's going to be a tie. Now, <laughs> with yeah. that, with that, yes. But indivisible points or indivisible rewards, third place, third person, yeah. third place. I agree. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh -huh. you know I don't like agreeing with him. Okay, you makes, just said you you said you agreed with me earlier. Me no, look, you didn't. Not with yes, he did. Not with the no. point thing. I said that, and you were like, "I agree with him on that." You no, when we said yeah, when we said if you're going to if you have a scenario where first and second players can combine the points no. and divide them, that's what he said he agreed no. to. Because I agreed with y'all on that. Hey. You know this thing's got a rewind button, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to go find that and replay, replay it. That's gonna be the short. That's gonna be the clip. I'll just send it. Put out there. Where the hell, divers at? I I remember agreeing with you on something, but it was it was that it was that. It was, it was yes, more. No. It was minor. No. It was not something that really mattered to the point. Yeah. Like most of. Yeah, so I think us old fellows are gonna take this. <laughs> we're gonna take yeah. this W this time. You want to do that last one? Um, yeah, so the uh, what is more complex? No, Teaching no, no. plus learning. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my shorthand does not help you understand anything about what that is. All right. Okay. Uh, so this was one of Dwayne's ideas. Um, so basically it's the most complex game that you've learned and the most complex game that you've taught, which obviously... We've talked a little, like, you could use BGG's rating system for complexity, but you may not agree with that. You I may think it's agree. also vibes, right? I think you just yeah. do it on a personal, yeah, personal yeah. feel. Vibes. And I just thought about it. Uh, when I say, when I say learn, I realize. Like be, be taught by yeah. somebody else. Okay. Not reading it yourself. Okay. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. You could add a third category, like the most complex game you tried to learn yourself. Yeah, because I think I, I think they're very. I think I have very different. Like how you doing on Mars? I think I have one for that one too. What's that? How you doing with on Mars, dude? No, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> Haven't you tried reading it before? Uh, the two ten, the lovely folks of two ten GameCon have volunteered to teach me that game at some point, so <laughs> I am gonna wait until All they're right. available. So I think that you saw the rating, dude. Yeah, four point six three. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's his most complex attempted to learn because he still hasn't succeeded. Yeah, because I gave up. <laughs> I'm valid. I think that's a hundred percent fair. I do think when I when I pump open her Germany, that might be one. Is it? What do you think it is? Oh, we already looked. Well, it's it only up. like a four point one or something. Oh. It was no, a. It was a four point. I didn't look it up. Two four point one something. No, no, it's four point one nine. Because he he would have lost I if he yeah, put it. Yeah. I would Mr. Won. President was the two yeah two something. Yep. Yeah. Either way, so on Mars is his hardest one to have learned on his own. Honestly, Honestly I think title blades. No, for, <laughs> hardest to learn on my own. I think was probably root. root. Honestly, oh yeah, because you're learning fucking what eight different games pretty much. Yeah. Mm. The base game, and then there's like what six factions. It's not that for me because I never got past a two player introductory game. <laughs> so that's fair. I will say that they, they they are good on that where it's like if you got this many players, play with these mm. and don't even worry about the other ones. Yeah. But like if you're going to just say fuck it and go, like and just learn everything, it's a lot. Yeah. And like uh, I said, it's like just a bunch of different games pretty much. 
Stop shaking my thing. I just noticed it was shaking. It's because you're yeah, I'm hitting it. All the way like I've gotten like I've gotten to the point where I won't teach root. Like if we're gonna play root, now nah, you better know it. I think you gotta yeah. I think you gotta watch a video or something on it. That's fair. Um, does Warhammer forty thousand count? Sure. If it, I mean, it's a board in, if it counts in your heart, then that's really that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tabletop game. It's not a board game. It's a tabletop. So. Yeah, that's fair. That's probably one of the hardest ones because I mean, again, same concept. There's codexes and shit. <laughs> you have to like read that shit cover to cover, and then then you have to pick up your faction codex and and read that shit cover to cover. You got a binder. And anytime you want to play with somebody else, you have to be like, wait, table. but your your guys do what? Yeah. And my guys, but you know, and oh, and this unit does this thing. And this if my guy's out. three inches away from your guys, he actually jumps well, over and slices can't his head you, like, off. And then can't can... you like piecemeal armies together too? As long as you reach, it's like a certain number of hit points or something. So for Warhammer, they were like. I don't know how it is now. So again, this is like fifteen-year-old information at best. Uh, yeah, the uh, like you assembled your army, Back in so the day. you would like if you wanted like a heavy weapons squad. You know, it was five characters, five units. I don't know if you had the ability to like. I only want four, um, but you'd start with that, and then you'd like do add-ons and stuff. You're like, well, I want to upgrade this missile launcher to a laser gun, and that would cost you a certain amount of points. I want to equip everybody in this squad with grenades. Like, it'll cost me an extra couple points per model. Um, but, yeah, so you basically set the points. Like, I want to play 1,000 points. Like, all right, cool, we'll play 1,000 points. points. And then you go and you build your 1,000-point army, and then I build my 1,000-point army. And you might become a little short, and I think that's how you decide, like, who goes first is, like, who has the, the fewer points. Um, and then you deploy your shit and whatever. One of the first times I watched these older, older gentlemen play a war game... Uh, was pretty early into board gaming, and I knew that that was not going to be for me because although I was so drawn to the table and all of their cool scenery and all the cool dudes that were painted, I walked up, and the guy was doing a measurement or something, and then he fl- he had a notebook next to him. Mm. Flipped open his notebook <laughs> and was, like, going through the pages and then had the character, and then, like, I just saw the full page of notes. Yep. And I was like... Nope, I'm not doing that. I also I'm think gonna... it's very funny that there's a a rule in Warhammer, at least, where you can lose points if you have an unpainted army. Yeah, so that's that's hilarious. That's the so, vibe, so that's, dude. Well, Don't no, come in with a gray. That's tournament play. That's even better. That's just so that's funny. even better. So you don't lose the battle. That has nothing to do with the tactical aspect of the battle, right? So like, I can come in with a gray army, and that's fine. But I will lose points in the tournament. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I think that's the that's very cool. What if yeah. I'm just like, oh my dudes got their fucking soul sapped out. That's why they're gray. <laughs> People ain't dumb, <laughs> dude. Uh, uh, if you even went through the effort to just dip all of your gray primed minis into, I don't just, know if that counts. Just a contrast wash. I don't know if that counts. It's some effort, at least. I don't know if it would count though. For the tournament style, I think they might still penalize you. But here's the thing, though. Like, I just feel like if you're going gonna... to... So, like, people who are into Warhammer are into painting. Yeah. Right? Generally, and right. Yeah, it's a laborious process, and some people will definitely take shortcuts. You could just you could just spray paint a base coat and line out some dry brush them or whatever, and you can be like, that's painted. And you won't lose points, but you're also... Because, like, they will give you points for best painted army. So that's usually how those things work is there's some kind of competition for like the best painted army, the best board presence or whatever it is that will help you potentially win certain overall tournament uh, awards. So like you're like the best, the best, uh, the best of the best, like across the board won't necessarily be the person who wins all of their games does the best in the battlefield, but like has the best battlefield score plus painting score plus how fun it was to play with the person. They do personality awards because like people who are app curmudgeons, <laughs> like they don't do well in tournaments because people don't like playing with them. Right. But if you're a fun, amiable person and people enjoy playing with you, some tournaments will reward that. Well, dude, cause you gotta, what's crazy is like, you're going to spend hundreds of dollars on these minis thousands right you're gonna write your own 50 page rule book for this game well that's that's something else i'm guessing yeah it's i'm 
I'm sure it's like maybe him specifically who is just writing out his own stuff. But if you're going to not paint, like that's the one thing that keeps you out of what I feel like is a very prohibitive, you know, part of the hobby, part of gaming, right? Is like that kind of stuff. I don't know. Why stop? Why stop at the painting? I don't know. I mean, here soon enough, I'll be playing uh, Legion. It'll be fun. No, you won't. Star Wars. Oh, yeah. I don't know. There's, but I get what you're saying though. So like, tabletop gaming and stuff, where you have to do this whole thing. So it's uh, a lifestyle game. It's a whole th- yeah. So when I was when I was uh, doing the War Games Club um, at West Point, the the primary focus of the club was actually, as denoted by the title of the club, War Gaming. Yeah. <laughs> like my little board game thing was very much an offshoot. We had our own like separate group, and there was some mingling back and forth. But they had two civilian professors uh, who were so into to war gaming, tabletop war gaming. They had like all the fanciest pieces and stuff the terrain like uh john one of the guys i remember uh like towards the end of my time there he was painting up this french farm house and he's like using like actual pictures from like 1944 france to like paint this stuff jeez and it's super cool like you said like the board presence is amazing but then when you're like all right this unit is a german shrum 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 user and he has uh, this kind of gun, um, and it is it is foggy out, and he is prone and a little bit tired. Uh, he is behind. He hasn't eaten in about he has one fifteen point, hours. One point of fatigue. He is behind a hedge that is his mother just a, passed in a dense hedge, and he <laughs> fires. Uh, and there's still the morning in this fog. direction at this distance. So roll these dice to determine whether or not it hits. And he's shooting at this object that's moving, whatever. And then you got to go and like, all right, cool. What is he shooting at? Well, he's shooting at a French, <laughs> and then go through the baguette. whole thing again. A French baguette, and you have to like list all of these different things to like compare. Like, all right, well, okay, so I got to roll these many dice, and then according to that, then these ones will hit, and then I have to do these saving ones and these armor ones and see what happens, and then like. It's a trigonometry equation just to figure out like one action, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good, especially when you can play an entire four X game in less in than an hour, sixty minutes with eight people. <laughs> yeah, it did not take an hour. No, for us, no, it didn't. It was longer. Oh, yeah, <laughs> both games. I think because your first one, you were like, yeah, it went way longer, and then ours did too. But that's because we talk a lot, so. No, you would never think that from some people who have a podcast. <laughs> people talk so much, they're like, you know what? Other people need to hear this. Yeah. It's really funny. A lot of the times when like when he gets here before, we'll start talking about stuff and I'll be like, actually, stop talking. Save Shut it for up. the pod. Save it for the podcast. <laughs> no conversations will be had. So did you See, do like your... we've already forgot. The other thing? Like yeah, you said we were going to save it and we already forgot. Yeah. Oh. I immediately forgot. I told you earlier. You got to write said, that stuff down immediately. I said, write your thing down. And then I said, don't ask me what it was because I already forgot. Oh, I, <laughs> I was talking about the points for ties one. But uh, did you say the hardest one you've learned on your own? You said root. Yeah. All right. So hardest one you have been taught. Been taught. Rest been Birmingham. taught. Been taught. Tricarian. No, Tricarian. Oh, Tricarian. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was a toughie. I learned that on my own. So I might I'm <laughs> I might say Tricarian. Maybe that's a teaching style thing. Two. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a genuine let me like obviously like BGG agrees with us. It's a complex game, right? Um it yeah, just feels, I, I it, feel like if anybody would have taught me that, I would have just been like, what the fuck? Yeah, honestly, Seb, like, I know we give you shit, but, like, that's just, there's no, I don't think there's a lot of great. And it's like, where do you game. start? And honestly, nothing for nothing. The time that you taught him, and I was listening. Now, obviously, I had the background. Real smooth teach. It was better. Way better. It was right, and it just, not just better, but, like, good. Like, it was a good teach. Like, very, very pretty, like, good flow I'll from, like, Action to action to action. When I tell you, 
I had just barely refreshed <laughs> myself. Yeah, and I get it. So it was all yeah, over the place. I get it. And that's where it, so like that's the part of the complexity. So like the other game by the same company whose name totally Mind Clash. Mind Clash Septima, right? Honestly. And again, so so this is the other thing is I, I think you gotta take into consideration like, hey, so for Septima none of us had played it before and we we're just kind of muddling through it so like i don't that was a muddle dude and i don't, so i'm like i can't <laughs> i'm not gonna hold you or anyone accountable or the rule book or any of that stuff like i don't know if it was a complicated game which is the first time any of us was trying to muddle through it so i don't know that that, I, that one holds and then like another good example of like this kanban right i was not in a headspace had nothing to do with like the game itself i just wasn't in the right headspace so I think I think I'm gonna stick I think I'm gonna stick with Dracarion. Yeah. Okay. It's also like the a time thing too, where it's like there's just so much stuff and it's a long teach. It's hard to encapsulate it's like forty that, minutes of a teach. It's that yeah. fucking falling bridge kind of thing where like Mm. You're getting you're getting new shit, and then all this stuff is just fucking. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. yeah. All right. What's yours? Hardest game that you've been taught? Most most complex. It's it's great. It's hard because I usually am the teacher, mm. right? And like a lot of these big games, I honestly would probably just have to go with like, ah, crap. It's gonna have to be. Probably Twilight, which honestly, were you taught that game? I was taught that game. Damn! Oh, that's right. You did play once before me. Yes. Okay. And it's not. And it's not even. It was fine. Yeah. That is just the most complex game that I've been taught. Yeah. I can't think of anything that someone taught me that I was like really struggling with. Mm. So I think most people teach better than me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like I said, I'm usually Whoa. the teacher. And I have no long-term memories, so I have a lot of RAM, you know? A lot, yeah. of, <laughs> a lot of space to store immediate <laughs> information. All right. Well, what about the most complex game you've taught? Uh, mine is uh, Great Western Trail. And it was very recently, too. What is that one rated It's a at? little bit of a weird teach. It's like a three-something, I think. Because it's, it's, it was just like... So I take into account the complexity of the game, but also just in general how like hard it was to teach it. 3.73. I think people's so like, hardest thing is grasping... Well, Because you do two things on your turn. You move your guy, you do the, you do the action. But there's mm-hmm. so much nuanced shit in between where like just moving to a spot you've got mm-hmm. those you got the bandits you got the the disa- the natural shit where you got to pay people pay the bank when you got to pay when you don't got to pay you've got the what building counts? spaces their their self they've got their own sheet that like that and then when you get to Kansas yeah the whole selling and income process and then moving the train is all just one turn when you get there i've always had people the biggest issue is like well what do you mean i can move up to this many spaces yes why wouldn't i just go as far as i can yes and it's like well there well because you have to take into account the actions in between timing of what you want might want in your hand sometimes i have a white cow in my hand and I want to maximize that. Right. So I'm going to stop at the place that I can use a white cow to get some money and then do this other action and I need a new worker because there's somebody just placed workers out and one of them is really cheap right now that I need. So I'm going to grab that, you know. One, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, and that's why I think the one step. I think two. that's something I, sorry. You're good. I no. think that's something I can fix on my teaches. Yeah. I straight up just teach the game. I don't teach like strategy or anything. Um, we know. <laughs> I don't, well, I don't try to either, but that's always the question I get. And yeah, I like every time, it. especially with like non, like not like super advanced gamers or whatever. Yeah, it's the question always comes up is like, what should I do? Yeah, or, yeah. I, 
Yeah. Well, casual so gamers who don't want to get kicked out of the group who are like, <laughs> oh, I, I guess I, I guess I'll play that. You'll have to teach me though. It's like, yeah, I know how to play, but I how do I? Play? We, we've yeah. we've talked about this in the past. First of all, like I agree a hundred percent. So games that have not complex but unique mechanisms that don't conform to how most other games work. So a brilliant example, which I I might, even though, again, I don't even know what its complexity rating is, and I guarantee it's not that high, but might be one of the more the games that's harder to teach conceptually is Brass. And I say that yeah. because it doesn't conform to, like, your turns, like the things you can do and how you can connect to stuff and what you're trying to do. And, like, there's so much complexity there and it's not that difficult it's just hard to wrap your mind around because it's not there's not a track i'm moving down you know there's not a very clear set of objectives i'm trying to do like i'm not clear how i make money like why oh my coal got bought but yours didn't or yours did and mine yeah. didn't and timing of sales prioritizing placement of the different industries honestly like just the fact that your action cards are hidden makes it kind of hard to help people during yeah. a play, right? Yep. But the most the thing is is like okay, these are the these are the cards in my hand. Even if you understand what you can do with those cards, people are going to not know which which ones to put mm -hmm. together. Yep. Which ones and if they do know, oh, I want to do this. I want to put a coal out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use this this card, right? And then not knowing like oh, but maybe not knowing what card to pair it with, right? They and use a city card or they use a coal card instead of a card city. instead yeah. of a city card to build in a city that they have a city card for and you're like, well, you probably should use that one because it gives you more options down right. the line and yada right. yada. You know, it's there's it's difficult because it's not conceptually an easy game to grapple with. Um as far as like teaching strategies though, like I think if you want players to be able to grapple with harder games, I really do think you you have to. Because to me, so like if you play a 30 minute game and you just say, here are the rules, figure it out. Low investment, they lose, you play it again, it's fine, they, they'll figure it out the second time. When you're playing a game that you're sitting down for two, three, four hours playing and you don't understand it until the end, and you realize in that moment that everything you've done between then and now has totally screwed you over, that's frustrating. Yeah, and unless you loved your muddle through play, <laughs> you're not touching it again. Right. So, like, in, an, in the interest of helping people curate good experiences, A, because maybe it's because it's a game you like, right? Like, I want you to have, I want you to love brass the way I love brass, right? You want me to love food chain magnet the way you love food chain magnet, and so on and so forth, right? Because we have an investment, right? You showed us that, was that the fox? What was that thing you said? You oh, the picture? yeah. Right, when somebody says, oh, I really I like, like this, this game. game, right? Mm -hmm. You want people to like the games that you like, right? Now, if you just let, if you just throw them into the fucking, you know, the shark tank and say, figure it out, they may, right, depending on the personalities, they may. They may. They may be like, I enjoy the challenge. But there are a lot of people out there, especially people who are newer to the, to, to the hobby and especially newer or less experienced with, like, deep, complex games. You're trying to get them to that point. Helping them through that process to be like, look, these are your options. Like, these are some things. You can, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to tell you how to play the game. I'm not going to play your hand for you. But let's talk about why you might do something why you shouldn't do something like give them some points and tips. So that way they get to that aha moment quicker and then get to enjoying the game faster. I just never want to overwhelm people. Like uh, that's, I think that's the, the wrong group. I think you just said that right there. It's like, I just want to get through it. Mm -hmm. And so we can get into it. Yeah. But like, here's the thing though. What's more overwhelming having somebody, help you through explaining your now your choices, right? I've explained the game. All right, cool. Let's wade into it. All right, cool. No, these are some things you can do based on the things that are just in front of you. Don't worry about anybody else and what anyone else going on. Just worry about what you got going on. Versus, good luck, fucker. 
<laughs> now you got all that. You have to process that internally with no additional support. You can ask questions and I will answer them, of course. But do you even know the right questions to ask? Yeah. There's also like the right personality thing really yeah. matters. Like when I played for a uh, food chain for the first time, I did not make a sale in that game <laughs> until the very last yeah, run of the game. Bad. And I ended that game with $7 <laughs> and I loved the game because yeah. while my turn was useless and I didn't know shit, it's not a game that you can like ask w about your stuff, your options without giving it away. Right. Right. So I was just like, I'll just go. I'll just do it. I'll just go ask questions after. I enjoyed what other people were doing. And so at the end of the game, I was like, I know I like this game because yeah. I know what you can do. Sure. Um, I also feel like someone like Kevin, you know, he might have a really poopy experience in a game and be like, hold on, I need to count on my chips. <laughs> 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 but I feel like at the end of the game... He could look at it objectively and be like, okay, I liked the game. That was just like me not knowing or not having enough experience or whatever, but I liked the mechanics yeah. objectively, right? And you would maybe give give a game another chance or be like, nah, this is not for me. 100%. Not just because I didn't get it this time. Yeah. There are some people who are like, if I don't immediately understand it, I don't care. Yeah. I don't ever want to play this again. That is a hard barrier for me. And I think that's probably part of my philosophy about helping other people is because if I get to a point where, like, I don't understand something, and I I think I'm a pretty smart guy and I've played a lot of games and know how to, like, tackle stuff. So if I get to a point where I'm like, I, I have no idea. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't understand. I get I do get frustrated very quickly, and it does immediately start to impact my enjoyment and my impression of the game. Yeah. So being able to get through those points... And then again, like in, in a case like Wonder Woman's where it's so like, look, I am very frustrated right now because <laughs> I don't understand what's going on and what's happening right now. One of you has a tiny piece of information that'll help me. <laughs> All three of us had that information. <laughs> and you're not willing to give it to me because I'm just not there. And I'm like, all right, well, yeah, well, obviously we got there eventually, but... <laughs> watch, the, watch the Battle of the Games Wonderland's War video. If you want more details, if you are still here two hours into this episode, <laughs> congratulations. All right. You are top. You are our best viewer ever. <laughs> and you can come up to any one of us and play one game of your choice. Um, uh, comment if you can play any game with the three of us. There you go. Which yeah. game would it be? And it cannot be. Muffin time. It cannot be Muffin time. Cannot be Cards Against Humanity. It can be Helldivers. I would rather play Monopoly than Muffin Time or... You've never played Muffin Time. I would rather play Muffin Time than Monopoly. Let's go. Nah. I, I at least have agency in that game. Did you play Helldivers? See, I love that Monopoly, you can just mindlessly roll your die and move on. Rough. Give your money or don't give your money. <laughs> also, if you play well the rules, it's really not that bad. It's when people people do house rule thousand, the shit out of when Monopoly. When people do a thousand house rules is what ruins it, you know? Uh, no buying houses until you everyone's <laughs> gone around once. <laughs> Whatever that bullshit is. Yeah. Actually, I think that's a real rule, actually. <laughs> I didn't actually officially say the hardest game I've taught. It's probably going to be, according to the rules, probably Twilight Imperium. Oh, that you taught. Yeah, probably be Twilight Imperium. I've taught that a handful of times. Fuck it is that. complex. There's a lot going on. I'm hoping, I, I'm hoping I never have to teach that. Yeah. I enjoy teaching. It's when fine. I moved to Colorado, though, I have to teach it. Spoiler alert. Board and Scale's moving to Colorado, guys. Just kidding. Hopefully not for a long time. For we'll a see. long time. We'll see. And then we'll all just move together. <sighs> that would be so cool, dude. Hit the slopes. <laughs> <laughs> Come visit our reptile store slash board game shop. Dude. Where, nobody's doing that. Where Dwayne, who works in Snake Zoo, will show you all of this long slithery things. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin can Hanging you... out with Bell. Mm-hmm. Keep the going. Bell, 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 Bell Dolphin. Dolphin. <laughs> Bell Dolphin. <laughs> I'm hanging out with... Uh, Bell Bev DeVoe. No, don't. What? You're going to say something real. Democracy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Liberty Bell? If you like democracy, subscribe. You better. And if you don't, treason. And I'm coming for you. It's treason season, baby. 
Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. Thanks Is for that watching. still the music? No. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see more, um, if you haven't already passed away in your retirement home watching this, <laughs> <laughs> make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Hey, so you can subscribe keep watching, before you die. So you can watch Get the rest of the episodes. <sighs> watch the Battle of the Games episodes. Um, also, keep a lookout. We're going to do some other random content here and there that's not just the board games. So maybe you can watch us do some funny stuff. Um, like beat yeah. each other up. <laughs> these guys, these fellas, not me, I'm a little boy. <laughs> All right, bye, everybody.